This conference yeah, will now be recorded. So yesterday we looked at um, demographic messages, right? Uh, yes. Okay, I forgot I did not share the Yeah, I don't get that paper. Like. Yeah, give me one second. I will quickly send that. And can you see, uh, share this uh, HL7 document also? Yeah, I, I mean, the one we looked at yesterday. The PDF. Ah, uh, yes, yes, what? Yes, it's PDF that uh, which we have all the segments uh, details like that. Right, right. Yeah, I'm sending. Yeah, that's what that okay. that PDF itself is what I'm going to share. OK. So this is the one that you're talking about, right? This P this PDF. Mm, yes. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. I'm sharing that one. So I'll share today's and yesterday's so that I don't forget it again. All right, so we will look at further message types today. So yesterday we have looked at ADT A04 message type and uh, what are the essential contents, essential message segments and essential fields of each of those segments within the message type. So from yesterday's session, we saw that we, we have gone through PID segment already. So PID, MSH and EVN segment already. We will just in the further sessions as in when we proceed with various message types, these segments will be repeated in few few other message types so we won't be looking at the ones that we all we have already looked at and we will be covering the segments which we did not cover further okay so for instance now in this case today we'll be looking at appointments and charge related messages and uh, what are the segments and what are the fields important fields that we cover during during this session so in this instance if you look at siu message siu message includes various segments there are seven eight different segments that will be part of an siu siu message so siu is nothing but scheduling information unsolicited so when we were talking about the actual events we have we have discussed why it is an unsolicited information type as it has uh, as it can flow only in one direction which is from PM to EHR it is called as an unsolicited message so this includes various segments like MSH EVN PID SCH AIL AIG AIP and PV1 so each of these have their own names which will represent what kind of inf information will be embedded within that particular segment so as we have looked at MSH EVN PID already so we have covered those three segments so we will be covering the rest of the segments which are not covered because the information which is present within those segments will be same in any message okay it's just that MSH 9 will change in the MSH segment because MSH 9 will be SIU S12 S14 or S um, S15 um, based on the event type. Okay, I have included PV1 as well because PV1 has two perspectives, as I said the other day. From demographic perspective, the content will be different. From appointment perspective, the content might change. We have looked at the important fields. We'll just see how those will differ when we talk specifically from appointment perspective for PV1 segment. So we'll look at SCH segment now. So SCH segment is nothing but it contains the scheduling information. So SCH 1 and 2 are nothing but the placer appointment ID and filler appointment ID. These are nothing but the unique identifiers to identify an appointment. 
so these might be generated internally within the system or maybe manually assigned by any one of the uh, practice member in the front end mostly in most of the cases as we have digital transformations today so sch1 uh, i mean the appointment id will be uniquely assigned by the system itself okay and then we have sch6 which is nothing but the event reason event reason is like um, event reason and appointment reason are appointment reason event reason are nothing but the comment section where you can uh, comment and figure out and just let the add, just add a comment in the front end on what exactly this visit is for for that particular patient okay and then uh, you have appointment type appointment type is nothing but what kind of appointment it is whether it's a nurse visit whether it's a follow-up visit or whether it's an uh, vaccination visit and so on that kind of appointment types will be represented in sch8 and then we have sch16 which is nothing but the filler contact person so that's uh the person who is scheduling the appointment basically the receptionist so we send that information and then uh, sh20 also represents the same information which is nothing but the entered by person and then we have sh25 which is which is uh, to send the status code so this is little important so we need to have some discussion here so it will always represent the status of a message so let's take live scenario where we have to create two or three uh, where we have to create an appointment so when we create a new appointment we will send out an ADT uh, sorry SIU S12 okay so when we send out an S12, a new appointment will be created in the EHR system or the or whatever system it is uh, the message is being received by. So along with SIU S12, there is another indication within within the message from SCH25 where you will have a new where you will have a status of the message which says new appointment or so this is for a new message in case if you are altering the appointment okay you will be sending a trigger note of siu s14 or the message type of siu s14 so in those cases sch25 will change to some other value like uh, appointment bumped let's say bumped or for example if patient is in you will be acknowledging the patient so what is acknowledgement whenever a patient is visiting the hospital for an appointment once he is for let's say for example patient has scheduled the appointment on call okay he calls the hospital and he is get he gets his appointment scheduled and once he gets his schedule they will they will send out an SIUS 12 from the PM system to EHR system then new appointment will be created in the EHR system in in that particular message the message type will be S12 SIUS 12 and SCH 25 value will be a new appointment now when the patient visits the hospital in person first they will check and see whether the patient is in whether if the patient is in they will check in the patient check in in the sense they will acknowledge the patient so when they acknowledge the patient they will send sius 14 information to ehr system with sh sh 25 statuses acknowledged which means a doctor will get to know at the front end just by looking at the screen that patient <coughs> He is present within the hospital and is waiting for his turn to meet the doctor. Okay, so then if the appointment is cancelled, and a uh, PM system will trigger an SIUS 15 message with SCH 25 status as cancelled. 
okay so in this way the value of sch25 keeps changing with the actual message type and this plays a major role in identifying what is happening with that specific appointment so when you talk about the real time messages as well you will see there are various statuses in sch25 based on the message type that you have so in uh, when you are troubleshooting the issues and when ehr is actually importing an h uh, importing an hl7 appointment message they will definitely look at sch25 before importing the data into the ehr system whether to create or delete or uh, update an existing appointment that call will be taken based on the value that we have in sch25 okay and then we have ail so ail is nothing but appointment location it's about where exactly the appointment has been scheduled so few hospitals will have many branches in one city and it might be a case that patients might walk into the one of the branch and get the appointment scheduled for another location if all the locations are using one single console or one single pm system for their entire regions or entire locations present in one city so in those cases this particular option will play a major role uh, this particular segment will play a major role irrespective of wherever the patient appointment is generated ail segment is always included in an appointment message to indicate where exactly the appointment has been uh, for which location the appointment has been scheduled for okay so you will have ail1 is the set id and ail2 is the location resource id which is nothing but the location id and then you have a AL, uh, al4 which is location type what kind of location it is whether it's a uh, uh, physical location or, or what and then we have aip so let's look at aip first and we'll come back to aig because there is some information that i wanted to discuss about aig so aip is nothing but appointment provider so aip1 indicates the set id this is nothing but on which doctor the appointment is scheduled for and then aip3 is the id of that particular doctor and then aip4 is the resource type which means whether he is a provider or a nurse or uh, or some other uh, staff uh, so there are various kinds of appointment that will be created in the um, in the hospital workflow we'll discuss that about what are the different possibilities that we have when we talk about aig so in such cases aip4 will differ we'll talk about aip4 in in couple of minutes after talking about aig but in a general appointment message aip1 is a set id aip2 ap3 is the actual id of that provider whoever is providing the services to the patient so now let's look back at aig so aig is nothing but appointment resource as the name itself suggests it is about it contains information about a resource from which the services are being derived okay so let's take few examples here so appointment can be created on a resource so what is a resource a resource is nothing but some uh, something or some object from which services can be derived so in 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 a hospital workflow environment what are the various services that we derive it is not just the provider or the doctor from whom we derive the services doctor is one of the entity where we derive the services from apart from doctor there are other things like we go to lab so we derive few services from laboratory and even in when you visit a lab you will have a lab technician or if you visit a proper x-ray or if you visit uh, mri you will have a radiologist who is a different doctor again so you derive the services from that x-ray x-ray lab and there you have a different provider who is nothing but a radiologist okay 
and uh, so in this way the services can be derived from any resource within the hospital so a resource is nothing but it could be a doctor it could be a provide it could be a lab or it could be some other machine where you are deriving the services from so a resource is any one of these it could be a provider it could be a machine or it could be some other room appointment room like x-ray room or mri room okay so appointments can be created within the pm system in the hospital workflow on any of these resources so that resource information on whom the appointment is going to be created will be sent in aig segment so AIG 1 will indicate the set ID again. AIG 3 will indicate what is the resource ID. AIG 4 will indicate what is the resource type. So now let us assume, let us take three examples here. Uh, let us take two examples here, not three of them. Let us take two examples. Uh, so first example is we are creating an appointment on a patient. Oh, sorry, on a patient for a provider. Okay. So in such cases, AIG segment will have information about the resource. So in this case, the resource is the provider himself because he himself is giving the inf he giving the treatment to the patient. So what happens in cases where provider himself is the resource, AIG 3 will include the resource ID, which is nothing but the provider ID himself and AIG 4 will be the resource type which is nothing but provider and in such cases where the appointment is being scheduled on the provider himself AIP will also contain the very same information what you have in AIG because AIG has the doctor information AIP will also have the doctor information so because here doctor himself is the resource now let's take scenario number two Scenario number two is for scheduling an appointment for a lab x-ray. So in that case, what happens? We are scheduling an appointment for appointment for a room, x-ray room. Okay. So in such cases, AIG will have the resource ID as x-ray room, whatever the ID given to that particular room and then the AIG 4 resource type will be X-ray and AIP will be the name of the provider or the name of the radiologist who is present in that particular X-ray room will be sent in AIG, AIP. So this will be called as the resource. What is the resource here? The resource is X-ray room and who is the associated provider for that resource? which is nothing but the provider or the radiologist whoever is available in that particular x-ray room so based on these observations we can conclude that a provider can be a resource but all the resources cannot be providers which means all the resources cannot be doctors okay but a doctor can be a resource from whom services can be derived within the hospital workflow okay so in this way these values keep changing for aig based on whom the appointment is being scheduled for if it is being scheduled for a provider aig will have provider information and aip will also have provider information and if it is going to be scheduled on a room aig will have the room related or the x-ray or mri room related information in aig 3 and 4 Whereas AIP in that cases will have the provider information who is associated to that particular resource at that point of time. Okay, any questions here, uh, Avinash? Uh, Dixon, I think there is some nice uh, at my at my back. So, okay. can you hear me properly? Yeah, yeah you can you can tell me you can ask okay so like uh, you are saying like if it is appointment resource and appointment provider so if it is in mm -hmm. x-ray room then we are saying like who, who are there in that everything x-ray room those comes under the i mean those are providing the services right 
correct so when we come to, so uh, when we come to hospital can mm-hmm. we put hospital as a hospital resource and provider as a physician like that or is there any difference over there no no you so the two scenarios that we discussed are the possibilities hospital no we cannot put hospital as a resource here because you are deriving the services either from one department of the hospital not the entire hospital altogether right so, so can we say included I... here yeah tell me okay so can we say like emergency room or observation room or icu like that yes icu can be selected yes icu okay. can be icu room can be a resource and whoever i mean doctors within icu will be keep will be changing as per the shift so uh, mm. icu can be a resource and in that case as provider can be blank okay okay yes so specifics are included a hospital will be very generic if you include a hospital yes, yes. then it will be very generic usually appointments are created uh, based out on one point of contact whether it's a doctor they are coming here for or whether it's some particular department they want to meet uh, i mean the patient wants to meet so that information which is very specific will be included in the aig so if if someone is getting admitted to icu in the first go first they will be admitted to emergency and they will be moved to icu so emergency yes. cases will be handled little different so these uh, these uh, segment is included or used in scenarios where we are talking about outpatient visits where we'll have uh, a planned schedule okay so when we talk about okay. emergencies from your example emergencies will have a different case altogether they will have emergency systems where they will include just first name last name if that is available first name last name or ssn whatever is available they will enter it and they will start the treatment first irrespective of they won't bother about scheduling appointments and seeing whether it's present in ehr they will create a quick chart in ehr and uh, they will go ahead and start drafting whatever the patient is whatever medications or whatever treatment the patient is going through so in cases of emergency they don't, they don't bother about complete patient registration they don't bother about appointment scheduling and all so uh, they they will not be sending or generating they might not be sending or generating any information at that point of time okay yeah okay but if it is a scheduled visit so no one will schedule a visit for icu you know so uh, yes yes only so only right. thing i think at the post like uh, they'll be sharing the information but say no scheduling yes right so but to take it as a scenario yes icu is a resource where the derived services are derived from if you want to put it under if you want to say that whether i can put it under aig or not yes you can put it okay yes. any other question okay. from this scenario uh that and like uh, in the table uh opt opt is nothing but option right right so optionality in, uh, what is c it is c let me quickly check actually i forgot what is c just give me one second okay c means conditional on a trigger event type so whether some trigger event is based on the trigger events these values will change okay
So based on the trigger event or some other field, these values will change. For example, uh, here a resource ID will be in case if it is a room, it will it will be as it will be a room ID. And if it is a provider, it will be a provider ID. So we are talking about two different things here. One is in person, which is a doctor and the other one is a physical resource, which is like a room. So based on other aspects. This this particular field will change keep changing. So that is what it it's meant. Conditional. OK. So it can be present. It cannot be present at times. Mm -hmm. And then we have a patient visit. So as I said, patient visit is present both in a demographic message and then an appointment message. So in a demographic message, we'll just have what is who is the attending provider or basically who is the usual provider, which is nothing but the PCP primary care provider for a patient and uh, who is the referring provider. But when we talk specifically about appointment related messages, we see that P12 represents patient class, which is important here in a demographic message. You won't see P12. I explained yesterday what what we what P12 P13 are, but from an appointment perspective, it has more uh, more importance about PV12 than when than uh, for a demographic message. So in an appointment message, when we talk about PV12, we have patient class. So patient class could be an outpatient or an inpatient or an emergency visit and so on. So th these items or these kind of visits are not evaluated when we are capturing the demographics. They are they that particular data content will fall under an appointment related data content. So when we are transmitting an appointment message, we do look at PV12 to determine whether that patient is an inpatient outpatient or an emergency patient. So it has sig great significance when we talk about uh, P12 has great significance when we talk from an appointment perspective. And P13 is assigned patient location. So you might be wondering why do we have assigned patient location here? So uh, let's take one quick example. ADT A05 is an admit message type. So what does that mean? In few hospitals or in few implementations, you will see that an appointment being triggered with the help of an ADT A05 message instead of SIUS 12. Okay, so an ADT A05 message will not have AIP, AIL, or AIG information. So those segments will not be sent in an ADT A05 message. ADT A05 message will have a message. PID PV1 segments. So in such cases, they will leverage the data contents or they will leverage the fields from PV1 segments to send out appointment related information to EHR or other systems. So these will be few odd implementations that you will find out. So most of the implementations will come as SIU related implementations. 80 85% of implementations will be of that sort. But there will be few implementations where you will see ADT A01 or ADT A05 or ADT A03. These are additional triggers, trigger events that people, that few systems will use, few legacy systems like uh, old black box systems, Linux systems will keep using the old methodology of representing an admit or uh, up update of existing appointment and so on. Basically modifying an existing appointment and so on. So in such cases, PV1 segment will play a major role because PV1 will hold the entire appointment related information within it as it will not have other segments like AIL, AIP and AIG. So that is where the significance come out for PV13 field where it says assigned patient location, which means where exactly the appointment is scheduled for which location the appointment is scheduled for. So here you will have the appointment location when we talk from appointment perspective. And then PV17 will have the attending doctor, which is nothing but whatever you have in AIP, 
who is the provider for that appointment will be present in PV17. So PV13 represents AIL in a from a appointment message and PV17 represents attending doctor which is nothing but the AIP related information and here we will not have any data field for representing a source and then we have PV18 which is for a referring doctor in case if someone is referring uh, that patient to any specific hospital then that referring provider uh, information will be present in PV18 and then you have PV119 so PV119 is the visit number in SCH1 and 2 in the previous segment when we were talking about SCH1 and 2 we were seeing that we have appointment IDs which are unique to identify each appointment so in the same way PV119 is similar to that particular ID as we cannot send SCH segment as well in an ADT message appointment ID will be sent in PV1 visit num pv119 or pv150 pv150 will also hold the appointment id they will use any one of these fields either pv119 or pv150 in order to send out the appointment id in an for that specific appointment now pv144 and pv145 so these segments represents the start and end time of an appointment so when exactly the appointment is going to start when exactly the appointment is going to end that information will be sent in PV144 and 45 so this is how PV1 segment plays a major role in can cascading the appointment related information by including all the important data elements regarding that particular appointment so as I said ADT A05 A03 A01s are, are the ones which are uh, at times used by some implementations for sending out our appointment related information and as ADT messages cannot have SCH AIP AIL AIG segments they will cascade the entire appointment information in the PV1 segment using these fields okay so any questions on this one uh no Dixon. okay so now then we have we'll jump on to the next message type which is nothing but dft p03 so dft p03 is nothing but um, the, as the name itself suggests it's a detailed financial transaction message type where the entire information related to the appointment uh, related to the charges are included within this message and the entire information will be sent back to the PM system so that claims can be generated and they can be settled down with the insurance company and if and if uh, the patient doesn't have any insurance patient will get the information of how much amount he has to pay at the receptionist before he leaves the hospital okay so in this particular message type you will have you will see a message EVN PID so these are the regular messages that we see apart from that there are three more segments within this particular message type which are FT1 PR1 and DG1 FT1 is financial transaction segment where you will have the entire uh, financial related information in this segment and then you have PR1 where you will have procedure related information and DG1 for representing diagnosis related information so if you look at if you look at FT1 we'll take a deeper look at FT1 to figure out what all these fields we have so I'll show you the table as well um, so FT11 is a set ID so FT12 is the transaction ID transaction ID in the sense for each appoint for each charge we are talking about will have a transaction ID so that it can be tracked down it is like again the unique ID for that particular transaction or particular uh, charge and then we have 
transaction batch id so when 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 we are talking about uh, point uh, charges charges will be released in the form of batches from the pm system or the claims will be related in batches in the form, in in the form of batches in the pm system so let's say there is one batch for today okay so they when they are releasing the claims they will release those claims as batches and today's batch is batch number so and so usually they will use date as the batch number so in today's batch there are 100 transactions okay so each transaction will have its own each unique transaction id and the entire batch will have one batch id so that particular information will be present in ft12 and ft13 and ft14 will have the transaction date which means on when on which date the transaction is being done and then we have uh, ft116 so ft116 represents uh, the transaction type so there are various types of transaction types when we talk about uh, charges like whether it's a copayment whether it's a direct payment or whether it's a charge or whether it's a credit or whether it's an adjustment and so on so these are possible values that we should include in the ft1 segment ft16 whenever we are talking about uh, a charge related message so then we have uh, the transaction code we we'll look at transaction code after uh, after looking at the um, transaction amount and all so we'll come back there and then we have in ft113 we have the department code department code is nothing but if for which department from which department that charge is being generated for so for example the patient might have a dental uh, the hospital might have a dental department or it might have uh it might have a dental department or an ortho department or a cardio department and that in department information will be sent in ft113 and then you have ft116 which is nothing but the assigned patient location assigned patient location is nothing but which location the appointment uh, the charge is being generated for it is the same thing that you see in an appointment message in uh eil or pv13 where you send the patient location assigned patient location that information will be sent in ft116 okay and then we have ft119 which is nothing but the diagnosis code so <clears throat> diagnosis code is nothing but the code which represents what happened to the patient so when we talk about the real time events like when patient <coughs> patient visits the doctor <clears throat> just give me one minute okay let me grab some water <clears throat> Hello. 
yes Dixon. yeah so so uh, so we were at diagnosis code right so for diagnosis code whenever the patient meets the doctor so first they will determine what is the problem with the patient and they will add few diagnosis codes which will determine what problem the patient is facing okay like let's say patient has a fever it's a typhoid or a malaria so each each disease has its own diagnosis code so that diagnosis code information on what patient has been diagnosed with will be sent in ft119 okay and then what is the what is the procedure that has been performed like what is the treatment that has been given to the patient each treatment will have its own treatment code which is nothing but the procedure code so that procedure code will be sent in ft125 as you see as we see here so these both go hand in hand ft119 will have the diagnosis code and ft125 will have the procedure code which represent what treatment has been performed for this specific diagnosis and ft126 you will have the procedure code modifier so what is procedure code modifier it's nothing but a modifying element which will determine or which will modify the procedure code and specifically points out to a specific procedure that has been performed so what does that mean let's say there is a fracture on the leg okay uh, so in such cases they cannot just mention that when they are claiming the insurance they just cannot mention that there is a fracture on the leg they have to indicate which leg it is so there will be a procedure code to indicate leg fracture but to indicate on which leg they will have a procedure code modifier which will even more specifically pinpoint where exactly the procedure has been performed so in our example if we look at there is a fracture on the leg and it's on left leg so fracture treatment has been performed or procedure has been applied for leg fracture and for which leg fracture is represented in ft126 which is nothing but the procedure code modifier so these two elements are important in such cases where you will have uh, cases like leg fracture hand fracture or uh, little finger let's say little finger has been fractured or little finger has been removed um, so in that cases they specifically need to tell which hand it happened for so in such cases you will see that there are procedure code modifiers so procedure code modifiers are not always present in a message only in cases where they have instances where they need to specifically uh, point out on, on what on where the procedure has been performed so in those cases you will see procedure code modifier in the message and in an and ft120 is nothing but the performed by code and ft121 is ordered by code so these are nothing but ft120 is the appointment provider ft121 is the billing provider so we'll talk about a scenario here appointment provider is no, is the one on whom the appointment is scheduled for billing provider is the one who actually have the billing rights to raise bill or yeah raise bill for that appointment so why do we have these differences so at times what happens is not all the providers will have the access to generate bills for for the patients that they see so this is followed usually for the new doctors or in cases of nurse visits where nurses will give the vaccination or nurses will look uh, perform few operations like sutures or something in such cases the performed by provider or the performed by information will hold that particular person's information like any new provider being added to the hospital or a nurse practitioner however these people will not have the billing rights they cannot go ahead and bill or generate generate a charge for that particular visit that they are looking for 
it has to be approved by another senior provider who will actually have the billing rights to go ahead and bill that particular appointment so in such cases display comes into picture where appointment provider will be sent in ft119 ft120 and the billing provider information will be sent in ft121 now we have two scenarios here ft120 and ft121 could be same or it could differ now when the provider himself has the billing rights then ft120 will be the provider information ft121 will be the very same provider information as he has the billing rights and scenario number two both will be different in cases where the initial provider who is looking out for the appointment might not have the billing rights so in such cases ft120 will be different from ft121 ft121 will have billing provider information in such cases and sometimes like even if the doctor is employee also no need of uh, uh, he can't bill right yeah he can i mean it, it again depends on the authority of the hospital whether they have authorized him to go ahead and do so if he is yes he can bill okay okay and then we have procedure segment procedure segment is nothing but again whatever is present in ft125 we'll have it here okay so you will see implementations in the real time without pr1 and dg1 segments at all because the entire information is already cascaded in ft1 but there will be few uh, receivers whoever is receiving a dft message they few people will interpret the procedure codes and diagnosis codes from pr1 or dg1 segments so few people will send it few people will not send it so it depends on the understanding of the implementation guys on the either side or standards laid by the organization by their own organizations okay so pr1 includes the procedure related information it will include uh, in pr3 pr13 4 and 5 pr13 includes procedure code pr14 includes the procedure code description and pr15 includes it includes the procedure code date and time i mean procedure date and time when that procedure has been performed so others are mostly optional and we don't need to much bother about it even in real time you'll only see these three fields set id procedure code and procedure code description and then we have dg1 same goes with dg1 as well so it will have sorry so like we will be sending multiple diagnosis and multiple procedures right uh... yes yes we will be sending multiple diagnosis and multiple okay procedures. so within this column within this dg1 like dg13 yes <clears throat> okay within dg13 so multiple procedures and multiple diagnoses can be sent <clears throat> by dividing it with the help of a tilde so yesterday we have seen right okay. uh, with pid yes. 11 where we had two instances of address same address so we had a tilde the reputation character in the same way you will see in dg13 there are multiple diagnosis codes that is one possibility another way of sending it is sending multiple diagnosis segments dg11 dg12 dg13 dg14 and so on with multiple set ids so in so let's say we have four diagnoses okay so in those cases okay. you will see you will have four diagnosis segments and set id for each of them will be one two three four sequentialized and procedure will also be the same case in case if pr1 and dg1 are not being sent and if the entire information has to be sent in ft1 uh, ft1 segment in ft1 20 uh, sorry in ft1 19 you will have the diagnosis code separated with the help of tilde and in ft1 25 you will have the procedure code again separated with the help of tilde uh, do you have any example of these mm. 
-hmm. of multiple let diagnosis me, and procedures. Let me quickly check. No, I just have one sample. Okay, let's do this. I'll I'll show one example to you tomorrow. Okay, so that we can take a look at it along with PR1 and DG1 segments. I don't have an example handy, but I'll show it to you tomorrow. Yeah, not a problem. Okay. Yes. So yeah, that is all for today. So uh, today we have covered about SCH and DG1, uh, DFT message types and uh, tomorrow we will look at ORM and ORU message types. Okay. And apart from ORU, ORM message okay. types, we will also have other message types like uh, MDM, QRY, and acknowledgement message types. So these are the things which I did not cover during the, uh, which I did not explicitly mention. I wouldn't say cover, but I did not explicitly mention when we are talking about the events that are uh, that we that we encounter in the real time world. So these are additional events or additional message types which are needed to know. Um, when we when we uh, practically implement HL7 interfaces, so we'll be covering them as well. Okay. Okay, Dixon. So uh, any questions? Dixon, one more thing. Yeah. Uh, as of no, no, nothing. So like in PDF, uh, we have one more tab like V27 CH06 financial. Yes. Is it that yeah implementation guide come? Okay. Yes. Can you uh, send me this also? I mean, yeah, I mean, this is used for. Literally. You want this one? So, yeah, I can send uh, yes, it. That's yes. not a problem. This is used for certification purpose. So, at the end of the okay. session, end of the session, and at the end of the training, I'll be sending the certification material. Okay. So okay. we'll have 2.7 certification material. So this is part of 2.7 certification material itself. So once we complete the merge training, I will cascade that to you. Okay. Okay. So currently we are using 2.7 only. Or, uh, in the industry? Are we using 2.7? Or, or in our training? Ah, yes. Uh, in in industry and also in the training. I mean, are we in line the specifications, of uh, like, yeah, yeah, the, specifications uh, the specifications that I I am I'm showing on the screen in during our sessions are of 2.7. But in the industry, we are see we okay. are we are seeing people using 2.3, 2.5, 2.7 still. So we have other okay. versions like version three, but version three is completely changed. It is not the same structure. It it has uh, a structure which is similar to XML. Okay, so in such cases, I mean, uh, not in such cases, but basically, version three is not widely accepted by the industry because of its complication and because of its change in actual architecture of the HL7 messaging methodology. So people are still sticking back to version 2.3, 2.5, or 2.7. Um, so we'll see many implementations. Mostly we'll see with 2.5 because that is that that was the cream when uh, most of the implementations happened before even release before even release of 2.7. So we had this era of MU implementations from 2009 to 2000, 2010 to 2013. So at that point of time, interfaces implementation boosted up a lot. So at that point of time, 2.5 was uh, uh, 2.5 was like that was the basic, but that was the most recommended standard which was being used 2.3 and 2.5.
So you will see most of the implementations with 2.3 and 2.5, you will rarely find 2.7. And okay, uh, I mean, like if you go to version 3, so... it is even less. Mm -hmm. Okay, so like even like I mean, even uh, I mean, so there won't be big changes between 2.5 and 2.7, right? Or is there any like big changes? Yes, because there if are they changes. are somewhere if we are going on. So okay, in in for interview purpose, if if someone is asking, no one will. I mean, I have taken many interviews. Basically, we don't. Okay. We just see whether the regular <coughs> message types and whether common repeating fields are known to the person or not. We specifically don't check what is the difference between 2.5 and 2.7 because that will include very much granular level of uh, what segment what fields are present in 2.5 and what are withdrawn in 2.7 or what are the new fields and segments that are added in 2.7 which were not there in 2.5 so the major differences are like new segments are added new fields are added or in the latest version few fields are withdrawn or few fields are removed Okay, and from the PDF that I gave if you click on any one of these tables or data types, it will take you to a website Okay uh, Where is it? Yeah, so in this website You can select any version that you want Okay 2.5 or 2.3 or and you can select a segment and then copy paste it and then you can compare what version we had in 2.5 and what version we had oh, so what are the fields that we had in 2.5 and what are the what are the fields withdrawn in 2.7 and so on okay yeah <coughs> okay so this is very good uh, website actually it has everything so whenever we need uh, uh, to this any... i just uh... mm -hmm. okay so previous to this, I just followed HLS and Soup. Uh, like they have some examples and they have given in some more interactive way. <laughs> right. From right. that, I just yes, got interested can, that to. Is also good. That is also good. HLS and Soup is also very good. It will give you detailed explanation of what that field is, what are the possible table values that you have, and all of those things. There are many tools out yeah. there. You have a Happy Tool. You have HLS and Soup. HL7 soup will also give you options like mapping and how data fields are mapped and all of those things as well. Okay. So, and one more thing, Avinash. So, how good are you with JavaScripting? Do you have any idea about JavaScripting? Uh, no, I don't have any knowledge on JavaScripting, but I do. I mean, even I can't say like. Uh, I'll uh, I learned some Python, so I'm okay. not sure like how good I'm now into Python. So, but okay. so I'm just worried about like uh, when you mentioned in the course curriculum. So you mentioned yeah. JavaScript, right? Right. That is right. the point where I have worried and rest of the things I think I thought I can manage because it's a subject, right? So right, right. Okay, okay, no problem because I mean I'll be covering two sessions which will include basics of javascripting which is needed for our train which is needed for building transformations on mirth okay so okay. we'll be covering that but if you get some time just go through the overview of what javascripting there are a few videos out there uh, which will cover basics of javascript so if you get time just go through that uh, so it will be easy when i'm when i am taking you through the training it will be more understandable Okay, I will do that. And is there any requirement for XML and JSON or uh, everything will be on JavaScript? XML and JSON has to be understood, but not at the advanced level. So we'll be covering uh, basics of XML anyways, because there is a session called E4X where we'll be talking about XML, what is parent node, what is child node, what are attributes and all of these things. So you don't you okay. explicitly you don't need to learn explicitly what you have to cover is about understanding javascripting so that 
when we are talking about JavaScript, you can understand it better. And when we are applying transformations, you can understand it even more better. Okay, yeah. Okay. Okay, all right, then we'll so catch up tomorrow morning. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. All bye. right, then. Bye bye.